Welcome to the Emerging Civil War Podcast. I'm Chris Mikowski, and we're going to partake in an ECW holiday tradition here today, or at least this is the second year of what's going to become holiday tradition. Uh, joining me from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, is my friend Jim Schmick from Civil War and More. Jim, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm delighted because I get to do a little Christmas shopping with you today. There you go. <laughs> I got it. I got it. You do Price it low. Watch, price it low. Watch it go. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Jim's got a great store in Mechanicsburg. He's been super good to emerging Civil War ever since our earliest days. And a couple years ago, I was like, Jim, let's just walk around your store and talk about some holiday gift ideas for Civil War buffs. And it turned out to be an incredibly successful video for both of us. Yeah, I just uh, I just had a customer about three or four weeks ago come in from. Uh, Reading, Pennsylvania, said, I've been wanting to come in here since I heard uh, you on Emerging Civil War, and I uh, finally got here, and he hung out for two hours. He was uh, amazed by the variety of uh, of books. I had a guy in Kentucky once waiting at the front door, <laughs> and and he, same thing. It's because of uh, your Zoom, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, let's zoom through the store again today and see what holiday gift ideas you might okay. have for the Civil War buff for Christmas. Um, I got them. All right. So okay. as we as we move to our first spot, Jim, tell us a little bit. How, how can people find the store in person and online? Uh, just bring up my uh, website, civilwarmore.com. The directions are there, the address, everybody is GPS. And I'm just a half hour north of uh, Gettysburg and uh, the organization I helped found uh, 32 years ago, Camp Curtin Historical Society. We've uh, placed over $100,000 in waste sites and monuments in the area. So if you stop in, I can give your brochures and maps. You can do a self-guided tour or you can hire me to also give a tour if you'd like that. I can go. Uh, my mini tour is two hours. We don't get out of the car. Uh, you want to get out a lot, it's three, and then my mag is five hours. I take you west to Carlisle, I show you Yule and Jeb Stewart stuff with that one. Oh, very good. So, so you get uh, Jim Schmick in your Christmas stocking to see that's right. Civil War. All right. So what do you yeah. have in the store? What do you have in the store for us today? Well, I always keep at the at the ca at the cash register the local books. I helped with this one with Cooper Winger, uh Confederate approach on Harrisburg. And then uh, he also did a book, Civil War Harrisburg. So I have a lot of the local stuff. Now, right here, this was, up till this week, the number one selling book in America, if we are striking for Pennsylvania, by uh, Scott Mingus and Eric Wittenberg. And you know they're like, between, they probably have 50-some books easily. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what they did is they... Um, redid the 1966 classic here come the rebels that's how i got my store started by selling here come the rebels and then branching out to other companies i sold more here come the rebels than colonel nye did because he passed away just a couple years after he wrote it in 1966 so what they've done is redone nye's book nye's book was this big and it was virginia maryland and then pennsylvania up to harrisburg but as you can see, volume one is just Virginia, Maryland, and in and out of Greencastle. So volume two is going to be called We Are We Are Striking for Pennsylvania. And that's going to come out in the spring. And that will be Chambersburg, Shippensburg, Carlisle, Mechanicsburg, Camp Hill, Le Moyne actions, and then turning around due to Lee's orders to go back to Gettysburg. They were three miles from Harrisburg when they were ordered to turn around and can you see this map okay? Yes, I can. Okay, I'll give you a big two-minute uh, talk on the invasion. So what happens, Yule kicks it off. He sends Gordon and Early through Gettysburg, York, Wrightsville. And in um, Early's memoirs, he said, I was supposed to go to Columbia, loot it, come back, burn the bridge on the Wrightsville side, and then go up to Dillsburg, which is just south of Mechanicsburg here, uh, to help you with the invasion of Harrisburg. But he said, I was going to disobey orders, come over here and go up through Middletown and beat Yule to Harrisburg. Okay. 
So what happens, come into the town right here at my, my store. They clean out the present day library, which was a grain warehouse back then. That's Confederate hospital for the invasion of Harrisburg. Everybody brought their Sunday dinners here to the red light and they ate them here, which is now a giant grocery store. And then the 14th and 16th Virginia and the um, 36th Virginia Battalion camped here across the street. And within two days, they cleaned all the cherry orchards out of here at Jenkins headquarters, which is now the Navy depot. They put four parrot guns here, two at the Peace Church, two at McDonald's. They're hitting giant Boscov's Camp Hill Shopping Center area. They take another, the 34th Virginia, which is Clawhammer Witcher, who ends up in charge of Jenkins' troops at Gettysburg, and he helps Jeb Stewart at East Calvary Battlefield. He goes out, loots Hogestown, goes by a Walmart, and he hides down at the Turnpike House, which is still there. That was one of America's first turnpikes. You turn the pike, you let the people through. The way they made turnpikes back then was crushed stone, crushed oyster shells with oil. And that's why Allegheny Johnson, who stayed back four miles west of Carlisle, stayed on Route 11 because he had all the lost supply trains. So they put a three-inch ordnance, 12-pound field house or the Salem Church on the ridge, which is still there. They shelled the Union militia at the Everly House and Barn, which is still there. They came in and camped from Red Lobster to Orr's Bridge. Goes down and they loot Mr. Orr's Tobacco Barn and steal everything from Mr. Esslinger's blacksmith shop. And they were so ticked off, so the Rebs put them in the Albright House. They used that for a jail for two days. And they also used the Peace Church for a jail. So as they were keeping Union Militia pinned down Monday morning, Jenkins and his staff goes up to this farm, which is still there, to overlook Harrisburg's and its fortifications. Now up here, I have a computerized drawing of Jenkins overlooking Harrisburg and its fortifications. Can you see that? Can you see that? Oh, yep. Can yes, you hear me? Yep, we can see. Okay. So as Monday morning's happening here, checking defenses, here comes Rhodes and Yule leaving Carlisle, heading to Harrisburg. And what happens um, when he's told as he's leaving to turn around and go to Gettysburg, so he disobeys orders and puts his tents back up because he has to send word to hey, oh, Gordon I I see Grant's last battle right there. Uh, really good. Yes. Battle, by the way. <laughs> yes, you did that. Yes. And uh, that's one of my biggest sellers of the series. Oh, so you. then here's uh, Mingus's book on what happened around Wrightsville and the burning of the bridge. And then, of course, they turn around and go to Gettysburg, but they forgot to tell Jenkins to get out. So he has 800 here, 300 at Denny's, Glimes Woods, and 50 in the barn behind Carpet Mark. The Union come out right here, and that's your farthest action to Gettysburg campaign. Let me have you tilt your phone down just a little bit. We're, there we go. Yeah, okay. right here. That's the farthest action north in the Gettysburg campaign. The skirmish of Sporting Hill. They killed 16 wounded, 30 Confederates. The Rebs threw all the wounded on their horses, ran back to Carlisle. The Union militia buried right here now is Route 581 leading out to Route 81. And right the volleyball courts of an old hotels where they buried them and they dug them up in 1895 and shipped them to Hagerstown and Rose Hill Cemetery in the unknown section. So they leave and now Jeb Stewart comes up from Hanover with Custer and uh, he um, comes into Carlisle. He leaves Wade Hampton and Dillsburg Chambliss and Churchtown with 125 stolen wagons. Then he comes in at Lowe's and puts his cannons at Burger King, Speedway Gas, and Giant Grocery Store. And he sets the lumber yards on fire, the gas works on fire, and the army barracks on fire. So Wittenberg's book, which is also a Savage Beatty, there he is at Burger King. There's Taco Bell on fire, Wise Market, Army War College. <laughs> 
So, okay. and I, you know, I'll add one little bit of uh, extra trivia since you mentioned a McDonald's where there was some artillery, and I used to live right there in the Delbrook apartments once upon a time. So that's right. You did even tell I'm me part that. of yeah. the landscape there. So right. So you had, and we just found out about a barn that Jenkins men went and stole all the uh, mules out of it. Yeah, yeah. Right so. near your apartment complex where you where you lived. And of course, right here, a, a block off the square, I call it the pancake house. You found out about a, a home where they made pancakes all day for the Rebs until they ran out of uh, flour. And um, so we keep finding things as time goes on. So that's incredible. Right here, I have, as you can see, I have 20% off. But I'm still honoring that for a couple of days. I'm going to move this, the signs around. But here's more of the emerging civil war. And of course, you recently did a conference at the Civil War Museum and uh, signed a lot of that stuff. Here's my medical section and civilian section. So I have a lot of stuff you're just not going to find in a lot of the stores. Yeah. Hey, who yeah. carries books on Civil War pharmacy? You know, yeah. Tilt, that, so uh, about, tilt, tilt the camera down just a little bit for us there. Um, yeah, and 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 to me, it's got to be really challenging uh, from your perspective to curate a collection like this, you know, because some of these books are so hard to find. Yes, yes, that's uh, when I'm sitting here, nothing's happening. I'm I'm still doing things. So the, here's the Ann Moore part. As you can see, I also have a little bit of Revolutionary War, and there's uh, Braddock's defeat. In fact. Um, George Junkin, not George Junkin. Um, oh, I can't think of the guy right now. He, his home is near here. Uh, Craugen, George Craugen. Stairs Gap was at one time called Craugen's Gap, and he was an Indian trader. And his home is right near the Sporting Hill Battlefield. It's a log cabin, still there. And he's the one that helped Washington bury Braddock under the road. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. Now, I so saw about that. Uh, I saw above that bookcase, there's a picture. Is that you in, a, in an artillery piece and someone else? Yes, that's Steve Nelson. He's uh, currently working with Dave Schultz on a, a very serious hardback, hardcore book on the artillery, Confederate artillery at Gettysburg. Oh, very good. Oh, very good. Okay. Yeah. So now here I have like my like 1861 Sears. Wittenberg, as human cavalry comes at age, and he does brandy station and branches off from that. So here's a lot of my 1861, 1862, 1863, 64, and then 65. Then I have a lot of uh, his, history press, Arcadia Press books. So I have a nice selection there. So I use every part I can. And I'm and seeing books, I'm, I'm seeing books from east and west. What do you mean? So I mean, you know, you're so close to Gettysburg, but you're not just a Gettysburg bookstore. You've got a lot no, of no, yeah, where. right. East and Western theater. You have to, you have to do it all. Yeah. You know, I stocked the National Civil War Museum and the Army Heritage Educational Center in Carlisle, and see, so I'm right in the center. Each one of them are ten minutes east and west from my store, so. I got to know what I'm doing there too. Yeah. So here's a lot of Mike Hardy's books. Great, great author. Great historian. Yeah. So seeing a local historian did one on the history of Carlisle, Carlisle barracks, the town of Mechanicsburg. So I have a lot of that stuff autographed. Here's my Lincoln section. And then union officer. Oh, I see. I try to keep some of the classics in there. Mm -hmm. The man behind the guns, you know, hunt. You got to do that. And then back there is my Confederate. Now you're not, having, make... you're not having to keep the Confederates in a closet because you're ashamed of them, are you? No. Okay. Just be... <laughs> no, no, no. There's only too much room in here. <laughs> no, this was an old shoe store. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And this hallway here is where all the uh, excess shoes were. I have hallways on both sides. Uh -huh. And so I have more stuff back here. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Uh, See, you always make 
Uh, good, good book. Good book. See, I keep some of the oldies now here. When, before uh, the one book came out with with Lee from Arlington to Appomattox, and everyone said, oh, he was never after Harrisburg. So I always make sure I keep a lot of these on oh, on yeah. hand because on page 253, uh, early talks about they were heading to Harrisburg. Yeah. yeah. You know, see, here's all my more excess stuff. Okay. So then I just had Jeff Wirt here. Good guy, I love his. Uh, I love his new bloody angle book. Yeah, see, and then Scott Mingus. Usually, this is Scott's table. Well, I just left Jeff's on there to change it up. Yeah. But see, all that stuff is autographed. That's yeah. his brand new book. You can call in. I ship it free because it's over thirty-five bucks. And like Fonz's book, Fonz did day one, day two, and Cemetery Culps Hill, and he never did day three. So Jeff did day three. Yep. So that's why I always make sure I have them on hand. And here's more of Scott Mingus's uh, titles. Half of his stuff is self-publishing up kids, kids' items too. And of course, if ladies come in, they like to crass, but also women are into the Civil War. I do have some female customers. And then I have things like this for kids or Christmas time coming up. Now it doesn't say it's General Me, but boy, it really looks like him. <laughs> Hold on, I mean, it's his, camera. it's his, it's his hat. Oh, but yeah. This, yeah. there's one. I think there's one too many stars, but it'll pass. <laughs> it'll pass. Then I have stuff even out in the windows, yeah. and I have a little grant section here. This for some reason I don't know. Somebody must have did something on his memoirs, but it's. People are asking me for his memoirs again. Yeah. And it is annotated. Yeah. So that looks then, like it's the uh, the John Marzalek edited version from the uh, Papers of Ulysses S. Grant out at the... That's Mississippi. right. Yep. That's what it has on it. Yep. And then uh, the Horses of Gettysburg. And here's one that people call in and ask for. Three years with Grant. That's so... I just keep getting different stuff, and I do have World War II here and there, and here's World War One, the Harlem Rattlers, the Great War, 360. Uh, Jim, Jim, I notice as we're looking around, and of course, lots of books, lots of books, but you've got lots of, I see, just artwork and, and yeah. all sorts of things. What else would you recommend as, as uh, gifts for Civil War buffs for Christmas time? Well, I do have, like, Here's my DVD if you still play those. <laughs> this this is on the fighting around here. I did it for PCN, who do they do a lot of the battlefield walks in Gettysburg. That was Battlefield, Pennsylvania. And then I also see that covers their approach from here to Harrisburg. And then I make sure I have Scott Mingus's Columbia and Wrightsville Bridge burning. Okay. Right. So that's right. that. And then I do have I see some branch there. Yeah, it's uh, stationary. Oh, okay. Yeah, Lincoln. There's the burning of the Wrightsville Bridge. Oh, yep. I got the uh, train station, Gettysburg Confederate Hospital. And then I have out here Carol Reardon's area. Oh, great. See, I get her to sign her stuff. Uh, I see her on an awful lot. So there. So usually I'll tell them there's two books to buy on, on Pickett's Charge, and that's it. Mots and Hasslers, which is ready to come out in print with Savage CD, yep. and then Carol's book. Yep. You get those two, you got it all. Yeah. Except there is a book on um, eyewitness accounts of Pickett's Charge that I sell, uh, which is really good. Here, I rarely have carry self-published, but if, if people send them in, I check them out. This one's really interesting. It's everything that happened in America during the war that had nothing to do with the war. <laughs> and even has it even has um, drawings of the underground water system being built in uh, Chicago. Okay. See so, hey, there. Really cool. I try to always find something 
a little different. Yeah. And then, and then, then I have my regimental area and I have a company. I get them to reprint some of the, the books. Like there's a 17th Pennsylvania, which my organization got the six pieces replaced on it at Gettysburg. And I've just found out I have a relative in the 17th. So that's cool. Oh, okay. First Minnesota is my biggest seller. Here's two volumes on the Pennsylvania Reserve. So you have two sets of that. This is the 93rd Pennsylvania, which is a two volume. That's Lebanon. And I have some other ones like a history of the Bucktails. So this 130th Pennsylvania, they are Mechanicsburg Carlisle guys. And they're the ones that buried the dead at Bloody Lane because they were junior regiment. Oh. See? And then here, Greg Gottfried, who self-publishes some of his stuff, he's a battlefield guy at Antietam now, and they're not going to have the, all the Hope paintings up anymore. And they're going to feature one a year once the visitor center comes back online. So look, Bloody Lane, there they are. Yeah. You know what he did is he has them all different letters describing on what you're seeing. Oh, that's a neat book. So that's neat. That's you're not going to find that anywhere. Yeah. And then his uh, book on uh, Lee heading north. Now that's Stonewall Live and Stonewall Not Alive. Yeah. <laughs> with with maps and charts and uh yeah there uh scott mingus told me there is a lot of accounts of uh scouts coming up into pennsylvania during the antietam campaign starting to check out you know heading up towards harrisburg if they can do it yeah that was the hope and then of course the walker incident where he said lee points to the map and said that uh we're going to go to this area right here and Lee points to Harrisburg. He says, if we can successfully take care of, you know, the B&O and the Hagerstown area, we'll be heading north. Yeah. So there's some more of uh, Troy Harmon's all roads led to Gettysburg. That's doing well. And then I also sell the 34 star Gettysburg flag. Okay. All right. And then after Gettysburg, when Virginia comes online, they removed the center star, which was Kansas, and added to a circle in West Virginia to another circle. I prefer the 34 star. It looks cool. That's yeah. one I fly outside all the time. Mm. And then, of course, here's uh, more Brad's, Brad's books. This is another one you don't see much of, Brigades at Antietam. That's a new one. He did that for a fundraiser. That's right. The Antietam Institute. Uh, published yes. That. And, uh, yeah. Great, so great see, I have some of my, my Navy titles in here. I got the little ships if you want them. I see the uh, Ulysses S. Grant mug there among the Navy stuff. Just a good underscore of the Army Navy cooperation that Grant. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Let's see, there we go. Here's another emerging civil war. Lincoln comes to Gettysburg. Excellent. Excellent. Right. And then this this is the book right here, page 288, where Lee has on. I opened it right away when I got him on June 29th. I looked that up when I, you know, when I got him, I looked at the June 29th part. And it has, well, gentlemen, it looks like we're not heading to Harrisburg as we thought. We're now going to have to turn to Gettysburg to see what General Meade is after. That's almost word for word. Yeah. So uh, let me ask you to stop right there. I see the uh, packages of plastic army men that you have on the shelf. Yeah. There. Yeah. And, see, I uh, use everything. I use every space I can. Like my son has a, like a bajillion of those and I can't really underscore just how influential they have been in getting yep. him interested in civil war history. Uh, and I don't know, like I had to set when I was a kid. I don't know about sure. you. Just, yeah, I did. I did. Classics. Uh, yeah. I have a picture of myself. 1960 on the Gettysburg battlefield for the Pickett's charge reenactment with reenactors. I'm six years old. The Ziegler Grove tower is still there. The cyclorama has not even been built yet. <laughs> so you know how, why, who stopped all the reenactment on battlefields? Why is that? It was Bud Robertson. Oh, okay. He told me when, when everything was done at the hundredth anniversary of the civil war, 
I think he was 31 at the time. He told me that uh, he sat in Kennedy's office and Kennedy said, what can I do for you? He said, I'll tell you what you can do for me. I want all reenacting stopped on federal park land because there's men still buried there and these guys are running around on top of bodies. And he said, Kennedy reached over to his personal secretary, M Mrs. Lincoln, and said, no more reenacting on federal property. That's how that got stopped. Uh, well, I know that it was a, a hard feature on the um, the Manassas 100th when they actually did stuff on the battlefield, and that was uh, hard on the battlefield. Yep. Okay. They must have had a special law passed or whatever. But uh, now there's uh, – this is my Gettysburg section. So see, if people call if they friend me on Facebook, I'll do this, and then they'll go – Oh, wait a minute. Stop. You know, yeah, right. And then I'll, I'll pull the book out. Yeah. Like here's uh, George Frank's books on. Tilt, tilt the camera down waters. a little bit. There we go. Tilt the camera down. Just there we go. Perfect. Yeah. Right, falling falling water. So yeah. just try to have everything. And of course, because they're there, you want to have pedigree there. Yeah. Right. Right. See, it's done more Savage Beatty there. Wittenberg's in here. This is a great little book. It's every brigade regiment casualties, men that were killed, who replaced them officers for the whole battle of Gettysburg. It's a real quick reference. And then of course I have the Hunterstown book. Mm -hmm. You don't see that many places. This has been selling well. So I keep it over here at the Gettysburg. Oh yeah. Okay. Gettysburg Southern front by Newsom. And then I have Kent Masterson Brown's Me to Gettysburg. And of course, the book he did on the retreat. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, uh, did you ever see this one before? Uh, I don't believe I have. This is Camp Colt. Uh, if you tilt your done, camera, there we go. Perfect. Done by Mark Snell. And it has great maps in it. And what's really cool is the swimming pool was where oh, Hancock yeah. got shot. Yep. And the headquarters is McDonald's to General Pickett's Buffet. And the tank training mounds were the Bliss Farm, where the barn was. And they actually had a manure furnace. They burnt the men's manure up every day. Yeah. And they said Gettysburg just stunk to high heaven. <laughs> See, there's pictures of there they are. See the tanks on the oh, mounds yeah. at the Bliss. Yeah. See the French tanks. Yeah. There's Eisenhower. There are so many layers of history in the cultural landscape of that battlefield. You know? Yeah. Look there. Do you see that? Look at that. Isn't that cool? That's incredible. You ever see a picture drawing of the guys inside? <laughs> That's really cool. Wow. Look at that. Wow. There, there's the headquarters. See that there's General Pickett's buffet right there. It is. <laughs> yeah. So that's a good that's a good book. Yeah. And then over here I have what I call my odds and ends. Got a lot of Earl Hess's books here because you got the no, right. uh, strategy and supply. I just had a, a show in Gettysburg and I got cleaned out of a lot of his stuff. I was in the Gettysburg hotel for three days. Oh, okay. Here's one. Yeah. Civil War infantry tactics. Yep. Yep. Now this is a Savas beauty. You don't see much of the land. America, per, yeah. Landmines oh, in the civil war. Really cool book. Yeah. Oh, cool book. And I got, I got uh, Jefferson Davis and his prison life. Have a religious section here. They get cover. Oh, well. The so, actually, actually, I was just talking to somebody about that book just yesterday, in fact. Really? Yes. Well, um, tell them to give me a call. Tip it yeah. free. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jim, I've got a five-year-old to get off the school bus in a minute. So before I have to leave, what do you want folks to know about contacting you for their Christmas shopping? I'm open Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays. Call the store, 717-766-1899.
And then if you can't during the day, you can call me on my cell from, uh, I'd say, 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock, 717-571-5092. I'll take your order at home, and the next day come in, ring it up, and ship it. The post office is just two blocks from the store here, and uh, I was a mailman 40 years, so I do use the post office. <laughs> now, last week, I, I, can't, I mailed a book to Utah and New Mexico. They both had it in three days. Tuesday, I mailed a book to Ohio, Virginia, and they both, I mailed them Tuesday, and they got them today, both of them. Yeah, well, well, so you'll get it quick. Question. I don't, I don't play around. I get the stuff going. These are I cool. I had these made. So you see Gettysburg. I did Cumberland County. Oh yeah. Of course, they hit Cumberland County June twenty fourth. Stewart <laughs> Sarah, July the first, eighteen sixty three. So uh, that's different type of hat if you want. To, if you're into the hats. So. so. Jim, I appreciate the chance to poke around the store with you a little bit today. Yeah, I appreciate the. Yeah. advertising for me you know it's tough a little store like this battling uh, the big boys yeah but I, you know i know that you pride yourself in customer service and the relationships you've built with your customers over the years yeah. you're very good to us to independent publishers and authors like myself um you're 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 the heart and soul of, of what keeps things going buddy oh i thank you thank yeah. you you have a great great christmas too, you and your family Thanks so much, you too, Jim. Jim Schmick from Civil War and more in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. You can find them online, and uh, we'll post the contact information in the description below. Jim, thanks so much for spending some time with us today. Thank you. Go get your little guy now. Bye-bye. <laughs> we'll see you online and on the battlefield. All right. Thank you.